Hi everyone. My name is Mike Mayo and I'm a lieutenant for the Anne County Fire Department. This is TJ, he's a firefighter. Thank you all for coming here today. We're going to show you our ladder truck. So I'm sure everybody has seen fire engines and ladder trucks and stuff going up and down the road. There's always a little bit of a difference between a fire engine and a ladder truck. This is a ladder truck, but we prefer to call it a tower because of what's on the front of it, this bucket. All the ladder trucks that have the ladders on top, they extend out and they get us up to places where we need to be, up to about 100 feet. But what's different with this one is that it has a bucket on the front. That we can put people in the bucket and they can move around. It also has a hose, per se, underneath it, or a, piece of, a pipe underneath of it where we can flow water out of it. If you notice over the front here, We'll show it a little bit better later. It has a nozzle up on the front. And with that nozzle, we can actually flow a lot of water on the high rises and bigger houses and far away, things like that. We'll talk about it. What's different than this, than a fire engine, that this has no water on it. Like a fire engine would have a tank and carry water and be able to get water from a fire hydrant. This doesn't have any of that. The tower carries all of our specialized equipment, such as for fighting fire and doing vehicle rescue. So one side set up to do what we do for firefighting, for ventilation, saving people's property, lives, things like that. And then the other side is where we have all of our vehicle extrication, stabilization, um, tools like that. Just the things you might have around your house, maybe things you have in your garage, maybe different versions of that, but even bigger, things that we can lift cars with, support cars, things like that. You wanna see where we ride? But up front here is where the officer rides. It's where I would ride. We have our SCBAs, all of our packs that we use to take go inside of the buildings with. Um, all of our mapping equipment, um, all that kind of stuff, our radio where we talk, things like that. And then back here is where the firefighters sit. If you look through here, we could fit four firefighters in the back here with all their SCBA, their gear, the self-contained breathing apparatus. It's what, it looks like a scuba pack, but it's what they wear to go into a fire. We have our medical equipment back here. So when you call 911 or you have an emergency, a lot of times it's for, it could be for different reasons. It could be because someone's sick, because someone needs help that we're not sure why, their house is on fire, or maybe they're in a car accident, things like that. So we talked about a little earlier about what we carry on the tower. So this, these compartments here contain the tools that we use for when you have a bad car accident. So we have cutters, we have what they call spreaders. What this does, this helps us spread the doors open. If your door is shut, nothing like that. It's very, very, very strong, okay? We would use that. We have a cutter. This can cut the roof off your car if we had to, things like that. They're all operated on hydraulics. So water or hydraulic fluid rolls through these, and that's how it works. They're not electric, not gas powered. They have little tiny pumps down here that, that operate the equipment. Okay. Then we move back to this compartment. So this is stuff that we have. If we have an emergency, you think about, say, maybe somebody's stuck in an elevator. Why would you call the fire department? Well, sometimes we can go there and help. So we have different tool bags that we use to maybe get into the elevator or if the fire alarm's going off and there's not actually an emergency, we have to reset that alarm. So we have different tools that we carry that help us do that. Um, we do carry two water, two fire extinguishers that contain water in about two and a half gallons. Okay. And then we move back here, we talked about doing the vehicle extrication or vehicle rescue, like if you have a bad car accident. So things that we have to do, we use those tools to gain access to somebody if they're in trouble. These tools are things that we use to stabilize the vehicle. We have what they call Jackson struts. If the car is upside down or if it's on its side, then we would use these tools to support the car or even lift the car if we had to. Different things in here, we have chains, just like you would have maybe at home, mom or dad would have in the garage, but we carry, they're a lot bigger and we use these for pulling vehicles or stabilizing vehicles or towing stuff, things like that. Okay. Something else that you might find kind of interesting. Why do we have all this wood sitting here? Okay. So we talked about using those other tools as Jackson struts to stabilize vehicles that were upside down. We also use these to fill void spaces and stabilize vehicles. These are called chocks or cribbing. Okay? 
We use these chocks and cribbing kind of like Lincoln logs. We can stack them on top of each other and keep working them up to go ahead and fill a spot in case uh, something's heavy or we have to hold the weight while we're in there working to make it safer for us. So, and as we move back here, we talked about if you call 911 or you have an emergency, it's not always just because somebody's sick. It could be because you have a fire, something like that. But fires don't always happen in the middle of the day. Sometimes they happen at night. And we need to be able to see what we're doing around your house, around that area after the fire goes out, right? So we have lights. We carry all of our, our own lights with us and all that. We carry our own electric. So we need to, we have more tools in case we need to do stuff plugs and adapters so like what we carry on here is not like you have at home like we can just plug it in the wall it takes a special type of plug so we have to be able to have adapters and make that work and then we come back here since we're a ladder company and since we're a specialized company we also do very uh, mild or very easy rope rescue stuff sometimes so sometimes if we have somebody stuck on the roof of a house or in a ditch or something like that we can go ahead and we use that tower but then we also carry a, a whole bunch of different types of rope and equipment hardware that we can make mechanical advantage and stuff like that okay. and then last on this side talked about how we could support the car lift the car with all that stuff this is just another way to do it we actually use airbags to be able to lift the vehicle. So these inflate, they swell up almost like a football and they can pick up a, a, a whole car. Uh, most passenger cars weigh about three to 5,000 pounds and these can lift them a little bit, not a lot, but they can lift them with no problem. And we have everything that we need here to do it. So we're gonna move to the back now. So you saw the big ladder up top. Well, we also carry ladders, what we call ground ladders, that the kind of like maybe you have at home. They're just extension ladders. They vary from anywhere from 12 foot up to 35 foot. So we can go up to like a third story or a third floor, like on the side of an apartment or something. So we carry a bunch of ladders here, the ladder on top. And then I told you earlier that we don't carry water. So we need water if we're gonna flow water and put fire out from the top, that tip of that, that lighter, that pipe on the end of the ladder. So what would happen, as a fire engine that has, light, has water would come up and they would hook into us here and they would give us water through this fit-in right here and, would go, and supply the fire ground or supply the, the ladder with water. All right, so on this side, we talked about, on the other side we had a lot of uh, stuff for vehicle extrication, car wrecks, things like that. On this side, we have a lot of stuff for what we use during fighting fires and what we call salvage and overhaul, how we protect stuff. So a lot of times when you don't think about it, you think about the fire when your house kept, when your house is burning, it's, it's hot, it does a lot of damage, but sometimes the fires are small and it just really makes a lot of smoke. And one of the biggest things that we need to do to make it safe for us and for you is to get rid of that smoke. So we carry a couple of these really big fans and it doesn't really seem like a lot, but these fans move a lot of air and a lot of smoke out of the building. We carry two of them. They're battery operated or they can be electric, right? We move this way. We talked about like we had the other side. We don't have water in a tank, but we do have fire extinguishers. So we have another water fire extinguisher. We have a chemical, like a CO2 fire extinguisher, and we have a dry chem extinguisher, okay? We have tarps. And you're like, why does, why does the ladder truck, why does the tower need tarps? So part of our job is not only doing life safety and saving lives, things like that, we're here to protect your property. So sometimes in the act of fighting fire, we make a big mess. We flow a lot of water and we use the tarps to protect your, pro your property, to cover it up so that it doesn't get ruined. Okay? Then we move down here, we talk like the other side, we have a lot of electrical stuff, electric plugs, cords, lights, things like that. Because like I said, fires don't always happen in the middle of the day where we can see. And then this is kind of a cool, cool shelf here. We have a lot of stuff on here that, that you might recognize from maybe your house. Maybe you've seen it, other people use them. We have chainsaws. So like this is what we would use to cut uh, into a roof if we had to, the side of the house. These are two different types of chainsaws. And this is like a chainsaw, it looks like it, but it has a big round blade on it. And we can use that to cut into wood, metal, concrete, whatever we need to do. Sometimes. Uh, if you look in your neighbor's houses or whatever, they'll have bars on their windows or like fences, things like that, that we need to get through to get to your house when it's on fire. And we would use something like this to cut that. 
All right. So in these compartments, moving on, we talked about we use those saws, things like that, to cut the roofs, house, you know, different things like that. We're moving down here. We have um, this bag contains like, it's a rescue bag for down like firefighters. It has an extra air tank in it that we use to help breathe some rope, and then. We have more saw. So these are actually the same things. One is gas powered and one is battery powered. They both look like chainsaws back here, but then they have circular blades up here. So this one is very aggressive for cutting wood and this one is not so aggressive. We use that to cut uh, metal fencing, things like that. Like if we had to get into a house or a metal bar like we talked about earlier. And then we have hose here, but that's not for supply and fire ground. We actually sometimes, sometimes mommy and daddy or people in their houses have water issues like the water the basement floods or something like that so we'll go out and we'll help out we have a pump that actually pumps out the water out of their basement or crawl space something like that and that's what this stuff is used for okay. and then this compartment goes all the way on the other side we have one of our this is where the drivers self-contained breathing apparatuses or the scba uh, we have a basket that we use if we have to do rescues from the ladder that we put people in and then we have cones and we have more of those uh, struts and jacks like we had on the other side, but these are a little bit taller and they're over here by themselves. So moving up, we got all the compartments in the back of the ladder truck or the tower. I mean, we showed you all the tools and things that we carry. And then we showed you where the firefighter sits on the other side. Well, this is the other side. Oh, look, it's firefighter TJ. There he is. It's where he sits and where the other firefighters would sit in there. And last but not least, this is where the driver sits. This is probably the most important person on this whole piece because they're responsible for driving it, operating it, operating the ladder, getting us to where we need to go. It's a very, very important job. It's very similar to your, the car or trucker that you have at home. It has a steering wheel and accelerator and a brake and all that. It just has a lot more buttons for the lights and stuff, but very, very similar to what you have at home. If you were here right now, you could hop up and pretend you were driving. Well, I hope you enjoyed your tour of our tower today. One thing to remember that the fire engines, fire engines carry water. The ladder trucks, whether they have a bucket on the front or not, or they might even have somebody that, a driver in the back that breaks in the middle here. It's a little ladder truck. They don't carry water. They're a specialized piece. Um, you see a little bit fewer of these down the road. They're usually a lot bigger than your regular fire engine. But the so next time you see us riding down the road, please, please wave and say hi to us. Have a great day. So with the tower, as you see it here, we use these things that we call outbreakers. That's what's sticking off the side there. They are actually underneath the vehicle and they, go, they extend out and they go down. We use this to stabilize the ladder truck so we can move the ladder. It increases the footprint and distributes the weight of the ladder better. It makes it very stable and safe. Okay? So, this is like all ladder trucks that are rear mounted like this. They swing out, come down. Like I said, the only thing different with this one is that it has the bucket or the what makes it a tower. Okay? As firefighter Justin is rolling, or, rolling the uh, ladder around this way to us, you'll notice if you look underneath the ladder right now, there's that pipe I was talking about. That is what, basically it's a metal fire hose. That's what the water runs through if we have to square water out of the bucket. We hook into the back of the truck where we showed you and the water comes out of the front of the bucket. As he's extending the ladder and he's gonna bring it down to us. So from the front here, you get a really good shot of the nozzle or the end of the hose that we were talking about that's on the middle of the bucket. You also can see that there's actually little rubber bumpers that are on the bottom of it. We don't like to have that touching anything, but if we do, those rubber bumpers protect the people inside and or the equipment. Um, 